Now we're going to do the radial engine assembly. So you're going to take all the parts that we just made and put them together. So we'll start mechanical design, assembly design. Now, first thing we're going to do is import all those parts. So click existing component, product one, and it's going to bring up, in this case, it brought up the file. I've already got it in. You'll have to search for it. Whatever folder you named it with all your parts, they should all be in there. Highlight them all at once, click open. And it's just going to jumble them all together. What it's doing is lining up these axes on one inch another. That's why they're all jumbled together like that. Just use your manip manipulation pad to move them out of the way. So you can s see it a little better. Help you with the next couple steps. Click OK. Now we can kind of see what we've got going on here. Now, the next step is you know you've got five of these piston rings but only one is showing so you want to right click click copy and then click on product and paste it four more times so you should have piston rings one through five and again it layers them on top of each other so use your manipulation pad and start moving them out of the way so you can see them all like so and the same thing with the uh, piston ring plug. We've only got one, but we need two. So you copy and you click paste. It'll put it right on top. So you're going to have to go into the manipulation bench, move it over. There it is. Now, the last thing we're going to do is get rid of all these axes that are showing. Just hide them all, because when you start to put everything together and copy and paste your sub designs, they're going to start to get really, really messy and take up a lot of room. So you just hide them now, and you can always bring them back later if you really needed to. Oops. Let's go to show all. Hide all. Hide show. The reason we're doing this is you can see it here. The copied ones, when you click hide show, it hides and shows all of them. See how it's deleting all the axes at once? And that means when we start to copy and paste these, it won't copy in more axes. They'll just be gone from the start. All right, first thing we're going to start constraining. So we want to take our coincidence constraint and find the central axis of our middle bushing and the central axis of our main. Oh, I'm sorry. First thing you want to do is make your main your anchor. So click the anchor, anchor it. Now do that constraint between that central axis and the central axis of your central part here. Then click uh, coincidence constraint between the top of that surface and this surface. After you've done those two you can click update. It should put it right in there flush. Next step we're going to take this smaller bushing down here. Put it where it belongs. You want to take this central axis Make sure it's the rod bush lower, it won't fit. And put it on in this central axis. Constraint again. Coincidence, I mean. This top surface and this surface here. You can see them. Click update, it'll stick it right in there. Same thing for the upper one. Find this axis and this axis. Then we do coincidence between this one here. Zoom back out and this top surface here. Click OK, click Update, it'll stick it right in. Okay, now we've got to do the same thing. Put this pin where it belongs. It's this axis and the central axis of this piston, not that one. The horizontal one between this circle. You can find it right there. And because we know it's the same length, we can do coincidence again between the top and this side of the piston. Click OK, click Update, and it'll put it right inside your piston for you. Now, the next thing we're going to do is get these pins on there. Same thing. You want to do coincidence between their axis, which you can see right there, and this axis that we just found. I'm all turned around here. 
Let's go on the other side so we don't have this main rod in the way. There we go. That's, now we can see everything we need. Let's try that again. Coincidence between that and... Gotta find the axis in there. For some reason it wants to give me the middle one. It's not what I want. There it is. Right there. And you want to do a contact between this under surface and this surface here. Click update, it'll pop it right on there for you. Now we'll start here because I'm here already, so we'll do coincidence between this axis and that axis there. Finds it easy because it's the only axis on that part. Now we'll do coincident or uh, contact between this under surface and this surface of the piston. Just gonna zoom in a little bit. Update and there we go. Now we're running out of parts, so that's good. All I've got left is the uh, the piston rings, which take a little while. So we're gonna do this, but. When I move the piston, you can see that a lot of things that are attached to it don't follow, but if you click update, they should. The piston wants to go back to them, which is fine. We'll do it later. We're going to take fine, fine piston ring, and we'll just start here. It's okay. We'll do contact and strength. This is piston ring 3, so you find groove 3, third one down, and attach it click OK. And now we're going to do contact constraint between the upper part of piston ring 3 and the upper part of groove 3. Right here. Click update and it'll and it brings the piston back to where it was. But you can see it put it in there. So I'm going to move the piston back so I can see it. And we're just going to do them all and then update it all at once. Same thing. Do your contact constraint between this is ring, ring 2, so inner of ring 2 and the inner of groove 2. Click OK. Contact between the upper of ring 2 and the upper of groove 2. Click OK. There is an OK, never mind. Now you're going to do contact between the inner of groove ring 5, and that's the bottom one here, so click here. Click OK. Now you want to do the top of ring 5 and the top of groove 5 right here. Now we're going to do the same thing for the last two. This is ring 4, so it's the bottom groove here inside. Click OK. And again, the top of ring 4, which is right here. And the top of groove 4, which is right Zoom in a little bit to make it easier to click. There. One more. You want to do the inner of, I'm guessing this is ring one. This is the only one left. That it is. So it goes in the top one, the bottom of that groove, and then you click OK. And lastly, you click the top of ring one and the top of groove one right there. Click update and all your rings should be inside of your part except for one which I don't know where that went. Ah, I see what I did, okay. Click I. I accidentally constrained one of them to the same spot. So we're going to click piston ring 5, drag it out. And you can see its constraints turn gray. So we're going to delete them and start over. That is piston ring 5. I want that one there. So let's drag the next one out, this one. That's the one that's wrong. And you can see it's got two constraints on it. See if you can click them. Okay. Let's delete. 
delete them. Oh, get, you gotta get out of your movement first. Click this one, delete it. Click this one, delete it. Now let's put it in the correct spot. We're gonna do contact constraint between the middle. It's ring four, so it goes here. Click OK, and then you're gonna do contact between the top and the bottom, or the under lip of number four. When you click update this time, they all go to where they're supposed to be. Good. Now, there's only a few things left to do. Uh, we need to take this smaller part here, this axis, and line it up with this axis here for this hole. You'll see it in a second. There it is. And make a contact constraint between this surface and the underlip of this flange here. Click update and it'll go right in for you. Now we've got to take, got to find it first, it's way out in space. Uh, this, this bolt here. We want to do an axis constraint between here and here and a contact constraint between the underlip of the bolt head and the upper surface here. You click update and it'll go into the right spot. Bolt on top. Let's click view all so we can see it. And the last thing to do is you want to take this piston you want to do a coincidence between that axis and this one here, the vertical. Click update so it'll move to the correct spot. You can see the piston's almost where it's supposed to be. You want to do offset this one between this outer edge here and this coinciding edge here. Make it, in this case, it's on the other side, so it's going to be negative 21.5 millimeters. Click OK, update, and it's going to center that piston right onto your part. Now, the last part is obviously the piston's facing the wrong way. So we're going to do an angle constraint between this bottom edge and this edge of our part. Make it 90 degrees. Click OK. Update. Uh, actually, since it's already upside down, we've got to do 270, and it'll flip it around for us. Now you update it. And look at that. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to do an angle between this inner surface here, zoom in a tiny little bit, right there, and this surface here. We want to make that 75 degrees. Click update. Uh, actually, we need to make it, it's got to be over here, so we'll just add 75 and 180. You can actually do that in Katia, 75 plus 180. That was actually a plus. Click OK, click Update, and now it's correct. OK, now. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to show you how to copy the part that we just put together and copy it around the flange. We'll show you in the next segment of this video.